weighed down by the troubles all around and he sings a melody so sweet and he asks me if I will join him so I do it's a living gift from a brighter world when our own the voice of the goddess in a little arm. The second bird in pearly white comes along when I just can't let go. I chase my worries. A harmony. What's up, witches? Happy Ostara. Oh, 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 Stara! Egg goddess. So, we are going to talk a little bit about Ostara today. Uh, we're going to be taking you through some of the themes of Ostara mm -hmm. that you commonly seen, see celebrated uh, in, as Easter. Right. Uh, because the Christian Easter kind of gathered all of its imagery and storytelling from the pagan Ostara. So, if you basically, if you take uh, the crucifixion of Christ out of Easter, it's basically Ostara. But even the story of it even follows follows um, one story of the of main Earth. stories of Easter. So, we're just going to kind of bounce around and show you some of the themes of Ostara and where they came from. Um, so, we'll start kind of by talking about how. The idea of Ostara being a lunar holiday, a lot of the symbolism in Ostara is um, has to do with lunar type things. Mm -hmm. um, the idea that um, the hair, uh, which is a heavily, uh, it's an animal that's heavily associated with uh, lunar deities, which we'll get more into later. Um, and the idea that the moon dies and resurrects itself every day. So it rises again every night. So with um, the idea of resurrection, rebirth, um, you know, cycle of life, all of that, that comes from the idea that the moon uh, follows that same path. Right. Um, so they also believe that the hare or the rabbit um, does the same thing. They believe that the hare, which was nocturnal, like the moon, would be born again every night and would die every morning only to live that same cycle over and over and over again. So um, to kind of tie in the hare Again, um, the hair was a symbol of fertility, which we know this is a big uh, celebration of fertility. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all about, um, you know, birth and flowers blooming, um, you know. Mother Earth coming back to coming life. Coming back to life. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, and another reason that the hair was selected as a symbol of fertility was because... The hare was is one of the only animals that can, can conceive, conceive while pregnant. Right. So, if you've heard the term "doing it like rabbits, rabbits. quicker than a jackrabbit on a date," right? Or uh, they just keep going and, and going, going and, and going. going and going. Okay. So that's where that idea comes from. You know, it's all about you know getting it in and uh, <laughs> making babies. Oy. So. That made it even worse. <laughs> so, uh, in modern times, uh, people celebrate the hare through the Easter Bunny. Um, the Easter Bunny brings an egg. It brings candy and goodies to children. Um, eggs are fertility. Candy and goodies are abundance. Right, which we get from Mother Earth in spring. You know, mm -hmm. crops are coming back. You know, plants are coming back. So, you know, it's a celebration of all of those themes. Um, there is um, a sort of ritual back um, in 
more ancient times uh, where pagans would hunt a hare for Ostara. Mm -hmm. um, it did become taboo at some point, but um, to hunt hares, but on always on Ostara they would hunt a hare. Uh, and I believe it was kind of like an, an idea of sacrifice um, to kind of give thanks to the hare. Um, so we also need to talk about uh, the other big symbol of the holiday, which is eggs, the eggs, eggs, eggs. All, all I, I want are eggs, 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 another dozen eggs. Babs, Babs, I'm hungry. Too bad. <laughs> so, um, the egg is the symbol of the cosmic egg. The infinite within the finite. Okay. Uh, inside of the egg, you have... Balance. Okay. So there's the dark, which is the yolk, and the light, which is the white of the egg. Or the light of the moon and the light of the sun. Mm -hmm. Masculine, feminine. It's definitely masculine, feminine, too, um, because um, it's they say it's like the sun or the masculine being surrounded by the glow mm -hmm. of the white goddess um, which if you think about that you know this holiday is a lot about motherhood uh, and embracing that um, motherly um, instinct protection mm -hmm. and you know kind of embracing all of that and you know embracing the qual that quality in the feminine so um, that's kind of where you get that um, theme of the eggs and the balance and the fertility and all of that. But how did the Easter Bunny get the Easter eggs? Okay, so are you kids ready for a little story time? Because we have a little Easter Ostara story for Happy you. Happy Ostara, y'all. Okay, so this one is uh, the story. I don't know if you guys have heard this or not. I'm sure most of you have. But it is about the goddess and the hare. Okay, and so this story is about when the mother goddess was planning to visit the animal kingdom. And of course, this was on Ostara, or this was when Ostara was born. And the animal kingdom was planning this big party for her. Um, you know, they all wanted to give her a gift or an offering. And uh, it was going to be a very big celebration because it was very special for her to pay the animals a visit. So some of the animals were very rich and some were not so rich. They were, you know, not as well off. And, but everyone wanted to give her a gift. They wanted to give her the offerings. Mm -hmm. Give her something special to thank her for the new life. So... All of the animals went to their homes to look for something great to give the goddess. Um, and the most excited out of all of the animals was the hare. He really loved her. He really loved the goddess. And he, although he was poor, he had a very big heart. So he knew he wanted to give her something very special. So he ran home and he's looking everywhere. He's looking in the cupboards and under the bed. But he had nothing. And the only thing that he could find in his whole house was a single egg. That's all he had left. And so he knew that this is what he had to give to the goddess because he wanted to give her something special. And since that's all he had, that's all he had to give. So he decided to decorate the egg and paint it and make it more beautiful. And so when the goddess arrives and all of the animals in the kingdom are there, they're giving their gifts of riches, Gym gold, stone. stones, you know, all of these luxurious type things. And the hare starts to get a little shy and a little nervous. And embarrassed. Embarrassed because all he's got for her is an egg. That he's decorated so beautifully though. Mm -hmm. um, but... The hare goes ahead and gives the goddess the egg, and he was a little worried, you know, at, at what her reaction was going to be, but being that she was the mother goddess, she saw right through what he was doing, and she saw through to his true spirit and to his heart, and she knew that this was all he had left to give. He was giving all that he had left. And so from that day on, the hare was the symbol of Ostara. And her special minion. Right. Basically, you know, this lunar goddess mm -hmm. 
said, you know, you shall be sacred to me. You know, you, you know, you gave me everything you had. And now you're going to be, you know, the center of this um, celebration. celebration. So that's where the hare and the goddess and the egg come together. And if you think about it, that story also kind of mirrors the Christian story of the crucifixion uh, because the Christian God gave the only gift or the only son most that he had, thing, most yeah. precious, to the world, blah, blah, blah. We know the story. Um, so, you know, they didn't really stray too far mm -hmm. from these themes when they um, came up with their uh, celebration, too. And also, speaking of the crucifixion, we have to talk about Black cross bones and the cross. So, excuse me, the Celtic cross was basically put onto uh, bread and eaten on Ostara. And the equal armed cross would represent the balance within the circle of the year. Uh, represented by the two equinoxes and the two solstices and the four seasons the um, wheel, of the year. wheel of the year north, north south, south east, east west, west and of course the elements okay? earth air fire water and spirit and the spirit would be the center of the cross the circumference representing the wheel of the year and the balance you know this was kind of like a common thing for um, pagans to do and to eat so on Ostara, you can prepare your own hot cross buns, and um, if we were know, bakers, we would do that. But right, we're not that. The only thing we'll bake is the kitchen. The only thing I bake is my highlight. Ooh, girl. Um, but uh, anyway, so uh, um, anyway, so if you want to, you can make that and eat on Ostara. Or what I was thinking was, is it probably be a good offering to Get goddess? Hungry. No, be a good offering to give to goddess on Ostara. If you How about a moon pie? One. Or a moon pie. Um, but you know, of course, you know, we wanted to mention that it's okay to Celebrate. use the cross because yeah. it was a pagan symbol before or it was a Christian symbol. Obviously ours is slightly different. Ours has equal arms uh, rather than, you know, kind of being lopsided. Um, that was a read. Um, just kidding, guys. Just kidding. <clears throat> anyway, so Brittany's going to kind of take you guys through some things that you can do on Ostara besides building an altar. Right. Because we showed you in the beginning of the video our Ostara altar. Our decorated eggs and mm -hmm. stuff. And we kind of put a pagan twist on those, you know, decorating those with uh, the spiral goddess and the green man, incorporating the fae, things like that into our Ostara altar. And here's some other things that you can do. On Ostara or the eve of Ostara, it, it's a time of preparation. You know, you think of spring cleaning, so out with the old and with the new. So you can start cleaning things and as well as that, start consecrating your tools, like your sacred tools and things like that. Um, and it's also a good time to think about blessing your seeds that you plan on planting throughout the year. So there's probably some rituals you can look up. I don't have any off the top of my head. Uh, let's see what else. Also, along with the seeds, till your gardens, begin loosening the soil, maybe putting uh, compost into them, eggshells maybe, okay, uh, and oddly enough, I've seen it was a good time to acquire a new broom. Okay, so uh, gas up the besom and uh, get to work, witches, mm -hmm. okay. And along with some more of the seed stuff, you can sort them. And really, the big thing is to honor the rebirth of Mother Earth. And it's also a time for introspection, you know, look back past over the year gone by, looking into the future, and look about, you know, where you are inside. So that's about it. All right. So we want to know, guys, down in the comments, let us know how are you going to celebrate Ostara this year, or Easter if you're Christian. And let us know, are you going to be decorating some eggs? Are I'm you going to be going egging to, somebody's house. Are you going to be um, doing Easter Bunny for your children? Um, or the Ostara Bunny? Can I get amen? Amen! 
Okay. Our um, only prayers were pagans. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you that has pagan roots too. We should look that up. I don't think it does. It doesn't. I don't think it does. Well, we'll adapt it since they adapt our stuff. So. Ooh. He is scalding. And it's better than ever. So, just let us know what you guys plan on doing. Um, don't. Uh, don't uh, be scared to connect with us on Facebook and on Instagram. We have enjoyed chatting with and make everyone. New yeah. We don't bite. I, well, I do when I'm hungry, but that's part of the package. True, true. So just remember until we see you guys next time, goddesses. Stara. <laughs>